one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. No, I don't think that's it. You got it, Tom? Okay, we got it. We are here. Let me define uh, we. That would be uh, Lynn Cullen and uh, Thomas. What's your middle name? William. Thomas William Sokolowski, which is a mouthful. How many syllables do you have? Let me see. Thomas William Sokolowski. Good God, it's nine. I can be a band. I can yeah, be, uh, be a draft family. I only got three. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You're three Well, see, so you have a news. Uh, Lynn Cullen. Yes, right. As opposed to NPR. I think we talked about this once, but there's all these people. Weird, these names. weird names. Yeah, right. And I'm often, yeah, sometimes I hear them and I think, what? I mean, I, I, I want to know. I don't quite he- hear what they're saying, and I've never heard the name before. And yeah, then yeah. you see it finally in print for some uh, reason, um, and you think, ah, that's what it was. Uh, okay. Celine? How do I turn this down? I'm, 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 he's, my um, darling here is whacking in my ear. Woo! Well, what did you figure out? Which one is your well, control? I, I tried to, but it's, you're, we're still awfully loud. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, you're awfully loud. Yes. Well, this has been a complaint that I've heard throughout yeah. my life. Well, yeah. Uh, no. All right. That's better. Right. I will now yeah. whispers the rest of the program. I want up a Thomas no. is. I'm so. Thomas. Was, good God! It's like you know, scratch my back. No, no, a little bit there. No, well, no, a little bit there. Do it yourself. Yeah, You'll fine. know. Well, but I. Yeah, all right. Well, fine. Scratch your own back. There. Oh, <laughs> scratch your back with a hacksaw. Like the, the Bickerson. Oh, is that? <laughs> yeah, some, right. Is that some right. Pennsylvania? No, I think that's what they. Um, what Mike Lang would say in hockey games, what he was doing. It didn't he? And then. And then Sophie famously said oh, it a that few was times. Her... Scratch my back with a hacksaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. She's annoying the angels in heaven. Oh, I love her. <laughs> I love her. With her. Tones. I love her. Her handed hair. Um, okay, so it's uh, Thursday, and here's Sokolowski, and here uh, a moi. Um, there's so much to talk about these days. <laughs> we don't we don't even know where to start. Somebody already tweeted, keep it light. It's very hard to do these days. <laughs> <laughs> Gay in the old <laughs> sense of the world. I remember this one old gentleman I once <laughs> knew in New York. He said, mm. you know, Tom, I have nothing against homosexuals, but they've ruined the, the use of a good word. Right. Gay. Gay. <laughs> In the in the in the no coward sense. <laughs> Let's go to a gay party down in the village. Well, it's true. You know, some of those old like uh, mu- uh, lyrics of oh, yes. songs, uh, it, or well, very much Cole Porter, or even right? like the gay '90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's total different meeting. Yeah. Okay, what's a Cole Porter song with gay in it? Oh, I'm not gonna be able to think about it. Cole Porter song with gay in it. Well, there's probably a million. There's probably a million. Yeah. Oh, I can't think of a one. I was hearing that great song that What's Her Name used to do. I've been to a marvelous party. Oh, do you know her? Oh, she was very much in, on, well, vaudeville in England. Hermione. Be yeah. Oh, be Lily. Do you know? I've been to a marvelous. And Mrs. Dunshane <laughs> took off her <laughs> Tremaine. And what could be funnier than that? You know, I used it's to think I, I, I looked like B. Lily. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, you have a bet. Yes, you do. I yes. do. B. Lily is a very sort of 
long, yes. horsey kind of a face, and she's she was so funny. Oh yeah, she was a great. Uh, oh. There was that other woman too, but she was mostly radio. The woman who did the thing, the telephone. And it was, oh, I can't think of her name. And it was just her as on one side of a telephone speaking as a very grand lady of society. No, I don't know. Oh, that Mildred, is. did you know? Sissy Farthingill had six puppies yesterday. No, I did not know this one. And they all died. <laughs> oh, think of her name. She was very, very funny. All right. There aren't, there aren't people you know like that anymore. Well, there, what, there is a paucity of characters, and we have talked well, about and, this. And word, wordsmiths. I mean, there's well, you can't like, have a wordsmith because there's nobody who can appreciate well, what they're saying. True. I mean, because I mean, God love the like, <laughs> Joe Rivers, but hers was very much a kind of rab, rab, vulgar, you know, yeah. uh, sexual, blah, 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 that kind of rant. But somebody who was sort of just debonair and could do the word be put down and, and rhyming. Well, the and, Brits probably still have Yeah, them. the Brits probably do, yeah. And we probably have a few here and there, but who the hell knows? What was the famous anyway. one from Pittsburgh who played the piano? We Oscar were just Levant. talking about him the other day, Oscar Levant. Um, who supposedly was a nasty, nasty, nasty man. Nasty, nasty man. Who did I just read said they hated him. He was the nastiest guy. I think Groucho Marx. Oh, really? Check Google Groucho Marx and on Oscar Levant. I, I swear Marx said Jack he was Carr, a jerk. And he was three-fourths of the time drunk. He was drunk out of his mind. He was extraordinarily brilliant. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and but also a great would, pianist. He'd be drunk and then he'd sit yeah, down yeah, and play yeah. Chopin yeah, without yeah. a mistake. Yeah. That was, you know, when I think back to From that, Squirrel Hill, I think. Well, that I don't know, but you know, of your older listeners, the early Jack Parr, there were all those characters like uh, Dagmar, and they used to play this guy. He was the first, well, Steve Allen, I guess, and then Jack Parr, <clears throat> or maybe they were on different stations. I don't remember, but he was the first one to do this thing, which you know is commonly called Chinese whispers. You know, where everyone whispers something down the and line, and how it comes back. Yeah, and to at the you. end, the story's totally different. But he would do it. Whereas he would place his guests, and he had a lot of guests whose native language was something else. So it would be a person, <laughs> English and French, French and Spanish, Spanish and German, German and Chinese, Chinese and English. And they would do it, uh, uh, what was her I name? I think we call that telephone. I have that, that, that English is, yeah, oh, yeah, right, right. But it would be hilarious, and they would be doing this in these <laughs> languages, and by the end, Charo was one. Oh, dear God. Who's still alive, by the way. Yes, I think she 85. is. Yeah. Yeah. Xavier Cougat, Xavier Cougat, who was her husband, is uh, long gone. And she was someone who was v probably was the first person to make uh, public and make popular bodacious breasts, whether they were her own or plastic. And she'd very wear low-cut gowns. And she had been in America for 50 years. But she kept But that. she spoke like, I, oh, I don't know how you say that. That was her shtick. That was her shtick. But she could play acoustic guitar, eight-string guitar, <laughs> brilliantly. Yeah. But she would say, I said to her husband, Cookie, I come and I say, and she would shake her I breath. know. She was You're hilarious. telling me? I saw her. You're old enough. I'm old enough. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. And jo did Josh like a board die? Is she still around? I remember she was in a coma for a long She's time. She's dead. She did die? But I think there's some, a Gabor sister is alive, I Ava. Ava. That was the one who was on that silly show about Green, Green Acres. Acres. I believe, but we might be wrong about this. She might be dead. Jaja was the one born to that terrible... Uh, Prince guy. He married was, to, not born to. I said born? Yeah. She married. Born, married. At the very end of her life, she was married. Right, him, right. No, she was being kept uh, alive for way past her, her time. Ugh, God forbid that should ever happen to me. Ava, Mama, <clears throat> Jaja, and there was a, and There, there was, was a, one that was, was less known. One, yeah. um, and they were no, all Hungarian, Hungarian, like farm girls. <laughs> Or something who came to America and decided they would be because they were pretty, they would be Koreans and whatever, and they really had no talent other than being pretty. Well, they had no, but they had they had. And everything was oh my darling, they had personality, yeah, they, had they personality. had self confidence, they had this, yes. and they didn't take themselves too seriously. No, that's there was true. always this sort of sense of humor about them. So no, they were very likable. You know when you made it just important people nowadays. We have stars, but we don't have personalities. 
Like you listen to Brad Pitt or something, who was very smart and seems very nice and all that, but he's very drab, as is everyone. But we really don't have personalities. There must be. Think of one. What? That's also a movie star. We well, got to I mean, have a someone, movie no, star no, no, personality. No, no, no. I mean, someone in the public eye. Uh, well, you know, you guys right. think? Why just leave the two of us here to think? You think? Yeah. Then uh, Lynn at PGH City Paper. Uh, dot com. I'm sure there are. Although we'll 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 less fight over who's a right. Who? But the point is, I think it's less because it's sort of our culture has gotten so flattened. Homogenized, homogenized. Nobody likes to stick their head above the crowd. Everybody wants it. Right. And you know, I was. It, it's interesting. I was um, because of this sh- one woman show I'm doing. I've had to go back and look at my career in my life, Mm -hmm. and I was thinking of, uh, I was wondering whether to explain why I got out of television, why I left Channel 4. I left Channel 4 in part, in large part, because there was a general manager there who decided, and this is probably a money crunching Mm -hmm. idea, had nothing to do with anything else, that he wanted all of the reporters at Channel 4 to be relatively interchangeable. He wanted Uh ciphers. He wanted, and you know why? Because if you have interchangeable reporters, you don't have to pay them much. If you have a personality. People would tune in to Sally Wiggin. That's right. If somebody becomes a character, a star. But the only thing is, but that's what. But that's what brings ratings. in the crowd. Yeah, that's what brings but that's the what. So, up. so he started to like try to take me down. He said, I, "I don't want her on the set anymore. Like she's really? somebody. Yeah, right. Get her down." And I thank God. Now he wasn't the same one who called you the girl. Or oh, that was a different guy. No, no. <laughs> but this is the one who said this to me. I I can't stand tall women. <laughs> There was someone with a southern accent here. Oh, he was very southern. Oh, dear. Oh, what a jerk. And by the time he was done, there wasn't a Jew left in the newsroom either. (laughs) The Jews. Well, that southern thing. He threw out Ken Rice, who's Jewish. He threw out me. He threw out Stan Saverin. He threw out this great producer, Stu Samuels. There literally was not a Jew left. I pointed this out to the news director. Are you aware that Hefner is uh, staging a... Modern day pogrom. He, has to, program, he yeah. doesn't like tall women. He doesn't like loud women. He doesn't like characters who are women. And he doesn't like the Jews. <laughs> the Jews. The Jews. <laughs> they is gone. Every single one of them. Oh, funny. Um, but that's not very sudden, also. But and that's probably part in of your it. face they want... and say, Oh, precious, how are you this morning? And they're like, Stab her. Once the door yeah, closed. no personality allowed, and that um, is now what you see. Oh yeah, but think of the personality well, that today, Channel Four. No, you don't remember this because it was poor your time. But Channel Four was known for personalities. Okay, we we were the ones who had Myron Cope. And were we they had, all Pittsburgh person? I mean, people yeah. from here? Well, mm-hmm. no, well, I wasn't. All oh, right, but I mean, we're looking at nowadays. Everyone across the country, because I know this when I travel a lot all over the United States. Everyone speaks sort of TV California English on right. these news. Right, I mean, right, you can't right, tell right. if you're listening to California, Alabama, right. Pittsburgh. Again, homogenization. That's a shame, you know. Um, I was speaking of that. I remember my agent once telling me, um, speaking of the South and, and, and accents and Jews and this and that, um, she was getting me job offers all over Kingdom Come. She said, I'll tell you, though. She says, there's only, I'm not going to get any offers from the South. And I said, not that I'd want to go there, but why? And she said, get this. Well, you'll know the phrase. You're too ethnic. (laughs) (laughs) Jew. (laughs) (laughs) Do you believe that? That's in 1984. You're too ethnic. He didn't want your kind. You're loud. You're sort of, uh, you know, who knows what you are. Too ethnic. Well, my, my, my. <laughs> I'll tell you. So anyway, um, my favorite story. Are there any Southerners who are fans of the show? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I have tons of. The time I was on C-SPAN, I got so much mail and. Vitriol. Uh, email from Southerners. Who Positive. were like, yeah. Oh, wow. oh God. Gloriosity. Who knew there was a, my God, where are you? Why can't we hear you? Yeah, right. 
<laughs> like starving, the starving masses yearning yeah. to hear Although, a liberal you were saying voice. before, when I, the three and a half years I lived in Norfolk, Virginia, I learned there were huge... Um, communities of Jews in the South. I know. Very I was big, really surprised there were Jews very, in the South when I, mean, I well, first example, heard it. <laughs> at, the, at the, we had the museum, the uh, Chrysler Museum, had control of three 18th century houses that were still standing. We, and one was, it was 1730-something, the Moses Myers house. Wow. And here was this man who was a merchant in the 18th, early 18th century and played a major role in Norfolk, Virginia, right on, you know, in Tidewater with the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so Weird. early on. Early on. Well, no, they're still there. No, I know. I but remember I'm when I started that... meeting Jews from the South, I thought, how can you be a Jew? But then <laughs> the <laughs> Jews react. Most Jews are urban and, and you know, yeah, east, yeah. both coasts and, and, and yeah. you know, urban. And so when Jews meet me and they say, and I tell them I'm from yeah. Green Bay, they it's the same thing. Right. There's Jews no, in Green Bay? Said, well, actually, any... we had this conversation. Celine and I, she's from Akron. And she said something about lots of Jews that she uh, yes, right. grew up with. I thought, there's Jews in Akron? I d- <laughs> well, sorry, but you said sorry. I thought, if, we, if anyone is listening to this program who is a Jewish farmer, since you mentioned well, that, I would right. like to hear from Do them. Do you know, and I, I had a... F- we grow matzah. <laughs> no, I knew a Jewish woman in Madison whose father was a chicken farmer. Oh, my God. I, I, and I have to tell you, that is. But then you go to Israel and they're well, yeah, Jewish farmers. Uh, the kibbutz, I mean, that do. was the thing. When I first, uh, when I was 16 and I landed uh, uh, in, in Israel for the first time and I got off the plane, I remember looking around and thinking. Jews grow things. Oh, my God. I remember thinking, oh my God, that baggage handler is Jewish. Oh my God, the taxi driver's Jewish. Oh God, the, the waitress is Jewish. I couldn't believe well, everybody you know, was Jewish because you me. don't. Why do you think Jews are not farmers? Why do I think yeah, that? Right. Well, they weren't, they didn't own yes, land. Exactly. They weren't allowed to own land. Right. And so therefore... They were they allowed were, to do certain yeah, things. Yeah, well, and then and hence they became in, 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 itinerant... Uh, they were peddlers. Were, and, peddlers, and, 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 and yeah. then they started My to, grandfather but was But yeah, because they couldn't own land. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and, and in the old country, even today, land is what yeah. is, keeps you rich. I That's mean, even right. in this country in many places. Ain't that the... No, it's always true. It is true. Oh, give me... <laughs> Land, lots of land. Land under starry skies above. And 75,000 acres <clears> and <throat> of $100,000 an acre. Let me straddle my old saddle underneath the western sky. Oh, my Cayuse. <laughs> Let me wander over yonder till I see the mountains rise. I want to stand in the moon where the winds well, come commences. Stand at the moon till I lose, lose my, my senses. senses. Can't Sem- look at cattle and I can't stand fences. <laughs> <laughs> now that was called Porter, wasn't it? I think. I don't know. I can't remember. Don't fence me in. What's a cayuse? Yeah. It's a kind of horse. Uh, it's Cole Porter. It's, it's a, a kind, kind of horse. horse. Yeah, I think a roan. Horse, I think. A roan is the color, like a red. reddish, yeah, reddish brown. I think I use. What's yeah. a spotted horse? Appaloosa. Oh, she's good. She's an equestrian. Oh, I was gonna say, I was like, how would someone from Akron know all these things? There's horses in Akron. <laughs> well, I can see horses, but what? I say equestrians in Akron. <laughs> I thought all they did was like make rubber tires in Akron. Actually, you know what's in Akron? What? Ebola. Oh, Ebola. Was in it's Ohio, a, but no, that's where it is. That's where, yeah, it's where she went. Akron. Oh dear, did you wear a hazmat suit? Yeah, you still did have family there. Are they dad? okay? <laughs> <laughs> They're burning bodies in the street. All right, Akron. stop. In tires. <laughs> That's Isn't what that I think of as Akron tires. Of the, yeah, well, yeah, we know how they, that was one of the things the, the drug dealers do in uh, Oh, stop it. Don't, I don't want to even think uh, about it. I don't want to talk about those right. god-awful people in Mexico that are killing everybody. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, my God. No. Oh, it's oh my God. Oh, my God, Mexico. They can't even find these schoolboys. Oh, yeah, uh, you don't even want to. You don't even want to look. There's like, what, 46 boys from a school. Oh, this I don't know about. 
that have disappeared. Well, they found well, you know, a mass oh, grave. Oh. Of course, every few inches there's a mass grave. And they start <laughs> digging and they come up with all these Let's bodies. The, I think there's a Mexican 26 ambassador bodies. To America and and call they up. decide, oh my God, it's probably the boys. Well, but you know, Now they thing, found out oh. those are not the boys. Oh, well, so, one, one thing they found is this was a p- in Time Magazine that they're fighting these drug cartels are buying up huge packs of land in Canada and planting marijuana you know where and they also sending up maybe these boys to pick it and then you know guess where they're doing that mules. they aren't going in they, Pennsylvania they, Wisconsin too. oh perfect yes because I know now with cheese Wisconsin, the, and marijuana the <laughs> Wisconsin State Police you wouldn't think Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin would be a good place to grow marijuana you wouldn't think so no it's a very short growing season and but what they do is they go and it's so Heavily forested, and you know, well, very you few see, people. These really right. So they, okay. But now they fly over, and they look for these places. But right, they truck up these poor Mexican workers yeah. to work. It. They don't even know where they are. Yeah, right. But, I mean, exactly. some of them. Cheese uh, falling from airplanes. That reminds me of an old Jewish joke, and I can't do the accent. My mother tells this joke cutely. Um, but, uh, you know, thinking of these poor guys stuck in a truck yeah. and then they're let yeah, out. Yeah. And, oh, so uh, two, old, two old ladies talking uh, at lunch and one of them says, so, uh, Sal and I were uh, just on vacation. And, oh, there'd you go. We went to Mallorca. There's Mallorca? I don't know. We flew. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, but that's sort of, no, yeah, sure. you know, you know, unless you look at a map, you don't know where you are. Okay. Oh, characters. PJ might have come Let's up with one. That. We'll disagree with you, whatever you've come up with. <laughs> How about Russell Brand? Oh, I didn't yes, like that's him true. until Russell just Brand, recently. Yes. Okay, he's a jerk, though, isn't he? I think it's yeah, hard for personalities is. to rise to the level of the past because there's so much media. And here are the three Gabors. Oh, yes, the Gabors. Um, in their finery. Maybe, their but if that's, if that's the best we can do, Russell Brand, that's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is quite wacko. But he is I mean, but you're funny. talking about somebody who's, I don't know. Hmm. Well, it has to be someone in the first place who's very smart. Has to be smart, has to have, you know, personality. Celine's going to give it a shot. Um. What? Tina Fey. No, she's a comedian. I would say she's very clever and she's smart, but she's not a personality. I mean, her personality is sort of bland. Oh, I doubt that. No, but her, even her, you know, I, I, when she's like, she was on a, she's on a commercial now for I think it's American Express or something. She she makes a few quips, but they're not. It's not okay. See, I knew we wouldn't agree. Okay, so uh, uh, Ray writes a little known condition of the Irish appreciation of those oppressed. On St. Patrick's Day in 1956, Robert Briscoe, the Lord Mayor of Dublin, led the annual parade along New York's Fifth Avenue. Two Jews were watching the parade. <laughs> Said one Jew to the other, "Did you know that Robert Briscoe, the mayor?" There of Dublin is a Jew. Is Josh? <laughs> Amazing! Only in America said his companion. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, or Disraeli, Prime Minister yeah, right, of right. England. Although he eschewed, you got to say God bless you. Yeah, thank you. All right, he eschewed his Judaism, That's which true. is one of the ways right. he would get to get but he where was he got. Off and on to to what's her name, Queen Victoria, for many many, many oh, yeah, years, yeah, yeah. and a very important uh, member of British history. Okay. Uh, Ray continues. Although there were never more than fifty seven hundred Jews in Ireland, less than six thousand Jews in the whole country. Um, a number of Jews have been elected to high office yeah, there yeah. since the arrival of the Jews in 1079. Oh, gosh. You, well, these aren't Jewish names. Yeah, well, quite recently, I think there was some of them. Okay, was so you got a mayor in 1555 who's a Jew. That is pretty extraordinary. 
I mean, Jews yeah. were just being slaughtered around then. Right, right, right. 1079, geez, that's the crusade. I wonder if they do you left know right. if they owned land, because as we talked about, you know, the, the inability of Jews to have land, I wonder if they owned land. You would have thought so, because how else would they, they have gotten to these high, um, okay. highly elected positions? In 77, Gerald Goldberg, that's the first one with a Jewish name, became the Lord Mayor of Cork. And Briscoe's son also became Dublin's Lord Mayor. Uh, the former president of Israel, Chaim Her- Herzog, was born in Belfast. He was president for yeah, His father Isaac was the chief rabbi. Nothing like that in England. True. Boy, he hates England. You ever been to England, Ray? <laughs> Have you ever been there? Wouldn't We're going to send you place. some Yorkshire pudding. You right? feel about <laughs> England like I feel about Germany. You know, I ain't stepping foot in the place. Right. Oh, that's... Well, I know it's silly. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. for back to the Jew stuff. If you're a Jew who refuses to step foot in a country that tortured Jews, that's true. You'd go nowhere. You couldn't. Well, you couldn't leave true. home. Well, because I was going to say most of the camps that were not in Germany. I don't know if any of them were. They were all in Poland or Romania, or because they had someone else do. They, they, what is it? What, we, what is it we do? They. Not redacted them. What's it called when you send outsource? No, 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 no. That's what? That's in Walmart. Uh, no, there's a name when you send like your political prisoners to another country to beat them up. And... Oh, recidivism. No, I, no, 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 no. I mean no. rendition. Rendition. That's All right. Right. I'll get it. You said it. Got rendition. You. Okay. Rendition. Rendition. <laughs> rendition. Rendition. <laughs> Which is really a cheesy thing. I mean, at least if you take take the the, the cudgel yourself and yeah, bash, right. bash don't, the don't have don't, yeah. and say, oh, we're so pure in America. Right. Oh, we never do that. I mean, didn't we waterboarding certainly yeah, yeah. prove that that was a pile of a crock, rather? All right. So. Um, to going from cork to crocks. Yeah. My, it's very good. My favorite um, story today. Tell us. Is from Mexico. Okay, your favorite place? Yeah, and it involves a camel. Have you heard of this story? No. First of all, I didn't think there were camels in Mexico, so it caught my attention. Huh. I know there are camels in Australia. You know, who's, you know, my parents once were in Mexico in the 50s. And they rode a camel? And they were in a cab. Okay. Starts with the same letter, C-A. They were in a cab in Mexico, and their cab driver turned out to be not a camel. A Jew! And my father said, my God, there's Jews in Mexico! He spoke Yiddish. They were I'm Jaime Juarez. They... <laughs> okay. You, you oh, can, we'll you, stop. You can have a kosher quesadilla. <laughs> kosher quesadilla. <laughs> okay. So it turns out there's this American guy from Chicago mm-hmm. who moved down to Mexico and he owned and here's how the camel got there he owned a wildlife park okay and he had you know camels and monkeys and llamas and boars and things like that um actually when i thought of this camp when i saw camel and then this list of i my almost started <laughs> singing again chicks and ducks oh. and <laughs> geese better, better scurry. scurry do we know that one Okay. When I take you out in my Surrey. When I take you out in my Surrey with a fringe, fringe on top. <laughs> okay, stop. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, so it's been pasted on uh, the Facebook page of this guy, one of your kind, Richard Molesky. Yes. Okay. Uh, he, uh, one the, of my kind. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're thinking. Since we're on this ethnic thing. <laughs> we're, yeah, right. we're sort of like a, what do you call it, genus and species. Yeah, right. You Polish people. Um, all right, so he's dead. The guy who okay. owned the park. Yes, okay. Um, the camel killed him. Hmm. Now, I've heard camels can be nasty. Have well, you they ever, spit. Have you ever been on a camel? Camel? I've been near one. I've never been on one. I've been on one. And let me tell you. are not very you, comfortable, I'm told. Well, I was on. Whenever you see people on camels, they're on that one hump, hump camel. Well, they just was a I was hump. on a two hump camel. Yeah, but I thought that's comfortable, no? No. Oh, listen, it is, I, in a way. You had because let me tell camel. you. Yeah, right. So let me tell you. Here's what happens when you're on a two hump camel. 
Okay. So, you know, there's... Well, no, save that for your program. I really should. <laughs> yeah, save that. <laughs> save that. Um, well, it's, it's like going to a car dealer. Would you like the one hump or two, madam? <laughs> Save it. That's well, not, it's also good as possibilities for your show. Well, it does. But I. Lynn Cohen was humped can come. twice. Oh. <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> but what's disgusting is that you have to, like, push. You get in between the yes. humps that are just like this. Uh huh. They're, oh, I thought it was on a bigger. No. Oh, okay. So you. <laughs> yes. Yes, slide in between the humps, and they do give. They give, so they. But then, as soon as you're they a stride, back. yeah, sure, they <laughs> boom, and so you got this bleh, this big hairy hump right there, and then you got a big hairy hump on your rump, and and and, and you, you never are, had a better time. <laughs> no, and it's, it's disgusting. It's just disgusting. You feel like you're having some kind of sexual experience. No, I'm it's very odd. Well, now is there a smell? Yes. Not a very nice one. No. And the fur, whatever they call that, it's was really just hideous. Hard. Yeah, it I was, touched oh, one. Oh, God, yeah. it was up. Oh. Well, and they're very, they're sort of very <laughs> ill, because I know they spit. Yeah, they're they very spit. Ill tempered. Tempered, yes. Well, wouldn't and you be? And they can spit crap. Well, well if I had to carry a little... If you were a camel, I mean, yeah, right. Lumps. Stop and think of camels' lives. I would not be in a good well, mood Well, but just think they could drink once every week, and they're happy. Did you see that uh, the global positioning system guys, the uh, Google, yeah. stuck a, a thing on a camel and, and walked it? Uh, this is for, you know, Google, I guess, oh, that, Street View. Yes, yeah, for G- G- They're G- literally G- doing G- every G-G-S. square inch of the universe of some poor camel. <laughs> that, I need to go to an oasis. Right. You know, turn left at the, at That's the, right. the next You'll uh, be able sand to... dune. <laughs> okay. So oh, here we bizarre. go. So the camel kicked him and bit him. Oh, dear. Practically to death. Oh, dear. And then when he was almost dead, you know what the camel did? He sat on the guy. Oh, my God. (laughs) He sat on the guy. Rescuers could not get the camel off. They had to eventually use a rope tied to a pickup truck. Oh, my God. To pull yeah, the stubborn, enraged seen, camel. The well, camel was to so, get up. He was pissed off his camel. <laughs> so they had to take, yeah, a Durango or something and just like sort of pull him off. And then they try to think, what the hell happened here? I think you should audition what? for one of those Nova nature shows. <laughs> Lynn Cullen will now speak on the genus and species of the camel. It's, it's uh, perfidies, it's customs, it's mode, and it's morality. Well, you know why they think the camel did it? Why? They said he would always give this camel a Coca-Cola every day to drink. <laughs> it was like Red Bull? Was and that? apparently, that day... Oh, he didn't have one? He didn't give him the Coke. Oh, my God. That's I mean, Coke should use this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Coke should use this. this you is that, I mean, piss you can, off a camel yeah, yeah. And he loves Give me coke. my Coke. I think you should tell, what's that zoo woman, uh, Baker, whatever her name is. Yes. I always remember her because when I first came to Pittsburgh, they were just putting in their new aquarium, and they did something wrong, and the water yeah. was dry, they boiled the fish. They and, did, they boiled yeah, the fish. And she, so fish. she made some comment, which stuck with her for years, where she said, well, some animals are dispensable. Oh, and the sort of pizza, and everyone sort of, ah! And she had to recant. She said that about because oh, yeah. of fish. Well, but fish are animals. Or, well, they're living things. You know. So they could have had a bouillabaisse <laughs> in the middle of the aquarium. That's where my dolphin used to be. And if you want to hear that story, come to Lynn Cullen's show. It's a beaut. That story's definitely getting told. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> For the two people in town who haven't, haven't heard, heard it. it. <laughs> no, I, when I was, I've been hawking your show, and uh, I, I said, oh, have you ever heard the chuckle story? Like, oh, no. So I think more people don't know it than do. But it's like children. You know, children like to hear the same story over and oh, over no. again. You know what I was thinking? It's not, only, it's not just it. children. We're all children in that regard. 
families. Oh yeah, I love certain families stories. get together, and I don't care how many, many times, times yeah. you do the same. Remember when and, Uncle, and everybody, Uncle Ben's la- teeth. everybody, yeah, you yeah, yeah, laugh yeah, again yeah. till you're going to die. Yeah, right. And I was thinking that that it's those shared stories. That make a family. That's what I was how funny one my family. Was to get serious tell. for just a moment, yeah. But it was about people farting, and there was a group of people. Is this one of your family stories? Yeah, family saying? stories. And people were in an elevator. This was my like, family stories are much more elevated. Well, than that, mine are say. funnier. But anyway, so everyone was in this elevator. This was the early days of elevators, and they, they the were, early days well, of elevators. Well, all right, or something. no, the late night, no. Well, I've I mean, been thinking when New York City well, no, went but it sky wasn't high. like today. But anyway, okay, so we were in elevators, and a person in the front had to relieve themselves of gas, and did so, and it was quite pungent. Yes, 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 yes. And so this person trying to defer from. You herself. can, you're in an elevator. Well, but where did the smell come from? So, she, so this woman looked around, she said, oh, which one was it? And the woman behind her said, how many have you got? <laughs> how, is, how is that a family story? Well, because well, this one of the persons in the... the elevator was a family said, person. How many have you got was a, was, a, was a family person, a great aunt. But I remember that story was told many, many, many times. Which one was it? How many you got? Some of them have to do with the person that I don't know if they're the funny. If yes, you yes, don't, yes. I mean, I'm thinking of, uh, many of our stories are about my uncle Louis, who was. You talk about a character. There's a character. But Uncle Louis um, had his own sort of way of speech, oh, and sure. he was he was very odd. And boy, we kids loved him. I think we sort of understood he was sort of one of a, one of yeah, us. A, a personality. Yeah. Least. Well, um, I remember my brother was forever when he was in college bringing home uh, beauties. Oh. Tall blonde babes. Yes. Yes. And he walks Chipsos. in. Yes. Oh, yes. And he walked in once with a specifically, uh, I'm not specifically, an extraordinarily tall mm-hmm. blonde beauty. And my Uncle Louie, who thought he was tall, he was like six feet, mm-hmm. uh, stood up, as a proper gentleman would, to uh, shake her Welcome hand. Welcome her into the family. And when he stood up, he wasn't where he thought he'd be with her. <laughs> <laughs> she was still... And he looked, his, he looked at her, and he sort of took a step back, and he said, well... And who are you otherwise? <laughs> it makes no sense. What the hell hilarious. does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you had to be there, too. <laughs> well, I know. Well, was but he looking like right in the I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, who are you otherwise? That just you know, so <laughs> captures, captures him. All right. I can see Groucho Marx saying something like that. Oh my gosh. Oh wait. Does Melanie have something to say? Oh, I don't want to talk oh. about it. <laughs> Back to concentration. You don't want to take down the top. Oh, well. the... No. Um, okay. So here's actually since we th- Oh, another story I'll probably tell is my Iggy Pop story. Do you know I've never my heard that once All again. right, okay. I Hotel. won't. Right. But I I've had a I I've 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 been uh, desirous of 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 like punching Iggy Pop out for a long I see. Okay. time. All right. I well, don't really, tell him more. No, I'm not. I got okay. him. He's here. He, 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 he's been tormenting me the, all my <laughs> life. He won't die. He keeps oh, getting dear. more. He's even getting more and more and more. And here it is. This was the final last. I think this was yesterday. Mm-hmm. In the New York Times. Listen, I can't remember what he looks like. He and I are the same age. Yes. Oh, that's right. We're both Midwesterners. We had a little... Contretemps. Yes, we did. All right. And it was written about in the paper. Oh, really? Oh, good. I can't Um, wait. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I did not come out on the winning (laughs) side. These are the losers. Oh, my. I lost to Mr. Pop. (laughs) (laughs) Well... I wanted to kill this Iggy guy. Iggy was the biggie. Iggy, I want to kill him. 
This was in the 70s. Oh, my God. I mean, this is so long ago. And you've been so, covered with chagrin ever yeah. since. Yeah, and I've been telling my Iggy Pop story for some time, and I, I'll, I'll hold off. It's, it's sort of, it can get complicated. And I, <laughs> and I, okay, but. Well, now, but we must make a parenthesis here. We've been alluding, alluding, but tell us, make your Well, own he's essentially. No, no, no. Your commercial for your for your. I'm afraid to. Tickets are selling so fast. Well, so I don't what? think. I mean, you want right. to sell them out. Uh, tickets to uh, Lynn Cullen's Wild Ride, which will be November 17th at the uh, Cabaret at Theater Square, benefiting Planned Parenthood, are going like hotcakes. You have to go to the Planned Parenthood of Western Pennsylvania website. And Planned Parenthood is so good, as the Australians would say, in terms of contraception. If you want Humpy Pumpy, it's pop it in the bag time. <laughs> what the fuck? What was that? Well, it means... I don't even know what you're talking about. Contraception. If you want Humpy to have Bumpy? Sex, Humpy what? Pumpy, it's what? pop it in the bag time. So where... Oh, oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines. If you want Humpy Pumpy, I can't do an Australian accent well enough. If you want Humpy Pumpy, it's Pumpy Pumpy in the Pumpy. Bag time. <laughs> I saw it on a poster once. It was great. Oh, God, that's good. You... <laughs> <laughs> I have convulsed the college to laughter. If you want Humpy Pumpy. <laughs> It's put it in the bag. Pop it in the bag. Pop time. it in the bag time. So you have all those peas. Humpy, pumpy, pop it. In the bag. In the in the bag. In the bag. Okay. As in condom. Uh, yes, I got it. But it took me a while. <laughs> okay, so I think Iggy, Iggy Pop, Pop, the grandfather, back. the father, the founder, the whatever, the blah, 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 punk rock, blah, blah, blah. Um, he... Uh, uh, he hasn't paid taxes. Here's under a headline. The headline made me scream. Oh, dear. Words of wisdom oh. from Iggy Bob. <laughs> That's what we call oxymoron. And right? then there are. He's oh. mellow. No, oh, I'm my. thinking, I was thinking actually as I read this, if Mr. Pop and I could meet today. <laughs> you might shake his hand. Yeah, we might actually. I hated you. What? Yeah. We, I think I'm we mellowed. would be pals. I think oh, we really good. would. But boy. So Back there that. when we were in our 20s, that was not the case. Okay. <laughs> so, um, he was actually paid <laughs> to give a lecture in England. This lecture was the fourth annual John Peel Lecture. And he was, it was covered by the BBC. I mean, it was aired live by the B Iggy Pop lecturing and, and live by the BBC. Here are some of the wisdoms he said. Be careful to maintain a spiritual exit. Do you know what that means? No. <laughs> See, when I heard, saw that, I thought, what does that mean? An exit door? A, a be careful spirit? And then I thought, I think what he meant is be always have part of you able to well, what the hell did he mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite up to the Sermon on the Mount. Well, what? <laughs> it's not quite a, a do unto others as you would have others do unto you. No, no. Or let the ch little children come unto me. Be careful to maintain a spiritual exit. Don't live by this game because it's not worth dying for. Hang on to your hopes. You know what they are. They're private because that's who you really are. Is that a bunch of just new agey bullshit? It sounds a bit like that to me. Um, okay, I'm glad to hear you say that. And then his speech was about to be was about free music in a capitalist society. Oh, I see. And then, see, so, here's, here's honest, about, I he... cannot stress enough, he said to the students at the university, the importance of study. And I'm thinking, the Iggy Pop I knew. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. He just knew if it, he could hold up a nickel bag and know if it was full, right? Oh, dear God. <laughs> Iggy, pop. Next thing you well, know, they'll you know, knight him. He'll be to, Sir Pop. Well, but the only thing that sounds disingenuous to me about that is I'm sure he gets all the royalties for his music and for him to say, oh, for use of, you know. 
That all sounds good, but it, it seems then that will raise a party in England. Uh, but okay, again, yeah, all wait. these musicians want, as they should in a certain sense, but it goes against its counterintuitive. No, he goes of, on to talk about the thievery of... Oh, uh, oh no. he's against it. Oh, oh he is totally against it. He says, now everybody's a bootlegger. It's not so cute as it was before. And there are people out there stealing stuff and saying, don't try to force me to pay. And that act of thieving will become a habit. And that's bad. Well, the only, well that's, that's true. But the, yeah. only thing, the only thing that's difficult now, and I was just actually having dinner with a lawyer, a friend who's an IT, uh, intellectual property, IP lawyer, is that now in this culture of the last 25 years, when we talk so much about morphing and riffs and appropriation, um, you know, like someone doing a riff on Shakespeare, doing a riff on a Cole Porter song or something, that is pretty much where all popular culture is. And if that is to continue, and it will, because it's a very much a grassroots thing, then you're going to constantly have people like saying, well, that was my, well, what's her name, Carol Vogel. Uh, right, 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 right. Come that, take yeah, that, that was mine. I, and, you yeah. ripped it off. Right. And, no, but Carol, what do you mean? I don't know about Carol, whatever. Oh, well, she was I'm just New York saying Times. that she does the art provenance, things. provenance. Yeah. Provenance? Uh, provenance, yeah. Right. Provenance is well, going to be harder and harder to yeah, prove. Right. But also, it's the fact that um, now, you know, you, you basically, what, what copyright law says is you have to be able to show that your usage of Grant Wood's American Gothic, you know, the man the woman with the pitchfork. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Has to, in three ways, be appreciably appreciably different in your rendering of it. Like Rob Rogers doing a cartoon about it. There has to be three changes. It's, like, it's like, what are, can yeah. you spot well, the words, differences? He, well, for example, if he made, as someone once did, um, a cartoon that said, Mr. and Mrs. Obama. So there's uh-huh, number as one. them, yeah. And then he did, you know, something else, like showing a cat. It wasn't a hit. Bat. It wasn't a pitchfork. Yeah, it, it was, was a, something else. Whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, harpoon. But anyway, and then if it was done for... Um, Charity? No, no, no. For uh, making social commentary. Oh, satire. okay. Then that gets a then that's, that gets get a buy. Off. But there are instances though where it's right on that end. Nice yeah. edge. And, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Ray, I asked Ray if he would uh, ever, uh, has he been to England, which he hates so much, and he says this. If I ever landed in England, I'd burn my shoes and, apo- <laughs> <laughs> and apologize to my grandmother's well, grave. Well, if you landed on your feet, they, you probably uh, your shoes would be burning, okay. Ray. The only time I had any trouble in Amsterdam was when I was enjoying a bowl in a coffee shop. A bowl of what, may I ask? <laughs> oh, yes. A bowl in a coffee shop, and I mistakenly asked a Welshman if he was British. <laughs> I wasn't exactly wrong, but I wasn't quite right. Buzzkill. Hope to say hello at your show. Oh, Great. fantastic. Oh, Ray. Well, Pleasure. it's interesting he says about the Welsh, because if Scotland had voted to... The Welsh are off, next. The Welsh, Welsh don't want it. Next, yeah, but right. I think with... The Welsh would have it far worse because they don't got nothing. <laughs> they don't got no land. oil, and they no, don't. No, exactly, and they have very few citizens compared to the rest. So, yeah. if money was a portion per, right. they really would be up shit's creek, as they say in Pittsburgh and other places. Yeah, yeah. But then Welsh certainly do sing well. Have you been to Amsterdam? Sure. Oh yeah, sure. Did you ha- engage in the? Uh, oh yeah, ball? they're called brown cafes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been. Oh, I've had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you could go and on the I went with on my the man. We're talking about it as they have menus, which in addition oh, to like, sure, say, sure. coffee or espresso or whatever, you can have different kinds of marijuana and different mm-hmm, strengths mm-hmm, and flavors, and, mm-hmm. and it's perfect. But you're legal. supposed to do it. There. Yeah, you have to do it. You can't take it away. Although we did. How did we do well, that? Well, you were an American. You well, didn't know I, the rules. No, I don't know. I didn't, you mean you could just take away, like, I mean, from a yeah, pharmacy? I mean, we left. Oh, I didn't think you a, could. I thought I you had to. I think we made a purchase and took it. Oh. Well, that, no? I don't know. I don't know. Are there any Dutch <laughs> drug, de- drug dealers? No, but I think they've there? changed the law there well, to make be. it that harder now for uh, people like us, the pot tourists. They don't. I yeah, because I remember back in the 70s, late 60s, when all the kids would go to college, and they were going to go, oh, I'm planning to go to France and Germany, and they'd go to Amsterdam and sit there for four <laughs> weeks. 
token away. Well, Amsterdam is fun. Didn't you think? Yeah, it is. And also, it's one of the places. And if you and want to get many, run over by a bicycle, well, it'll uh, also. I got. But it. also, it was one of the first places back, let's say, in those 60s and such, that English was ubiquitous, mm. which was not true other than mm -hmm. English speaking countries. And so you could bump down because the, the Dutch are marvelous linguists because no one knows their language, which Napoleon said was a mal de gaulle, a, 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 a throat disease. <laughs> Because it's all that, like, it's very, guttural. it's very guttural. Yes. Like Hebrew sounds that way, too. Yeah, Hebrew has a lot of, yeah. of guttural sounds. It's great for clearing your throat <laughs> while you're speaking. So, you know, you don't have to interrupt. So you know, it's not like us where you have to say, excuse me. <laughs> you just do it while. Right. Well, there's not spit. Like, not I was when taught when I first went there years ago, you know, that we say gouda cheese, it's gouda. Like van gouda. Yeah, yeah, the G-H. Van gouda. <laughs> Yeah. However, yes. I mean, don't you think we should just say over here Van Gogh? Because well, no. I mean, because when you try to say Van Gogh, I mean, you sound pretentious. One, don't you think? Well, would you like to be, as I know I've been in other countries, called Miss Culine? I don't care. Well. Listen, half the time, half well, no, the but time. I think if we know how to pronounce a word properly, we should. I mean, this goes all the way back to those jerks back in the... I remember Sally Wigan getting into trouble as an anchor about this kind of thing. Because uh, Sally uh, had a uh, master's in uh, Oriental studies. Japanese studies, yeah. yeah. And she had taken Japanese mm -hmm. and uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't think she ever spoke it fluently, but she... Well, well enough. enough, I was told. So, yeah. you know, she'd be doing the news, doing her thing, and then, you know, she'd say something. And and so the prime minister of... <laughs> <laughs> and oh, the well, news no director would say, her. oh, jeez. He'd say, Sally, come on. Hero Hito. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And and she'd go off on this thing, and you know, and it, and it said nobody knows what you're. It sounds stupid, and nobody knows what you're. It sounds stupid well, at once. Middle, and well, there's a middle ground, yeah. though. I mean, because it goes. I remember my father, who was not an educated man, it was a smart man, but and he talked about that when he was. Your uh, father was not a smart man. He was a smart man, but he wasn't. Oh, an educated, educated man. I got you. He never went beyond the fifth grade. Wow. Um, but was really smart guy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but he talked about when he was in the army in the Second World War, and this jerky guy from the South goes back to our comments on the South, and he was reading, you know, the list of the, and it was O'Brien, O'Brien, and O'Brien. I mean, oh my think God. If any name would be fairly generic in America, but it goes back to um, Ellis Island and people just saying. You know, they couldn't read a name that was South, Southern European or Northern European, so they just made some name up. And that's what those people, that's what, you know, why people's names change so mm -hmm. oddly. Right. Uh, Sue writes, we were in Amsterdam. Someone told us there are one million people in Amsterdam and three million bikes. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I... I mean, here you'll see if Peduto has his way and everybody ends oh, up on a bike. Ones, yeah. yeah, I mean, my God, uh, cars can't get anywhere. Oh, Penn it, Avenue is squished. Uh, I, I know. Lake. Cars can't get anywhere, and you do not. You either want to be on foot or on a bike in in Amsterdam, or yeah. I guess on a canal. Um, and even that, or you're not moving very fast. Yeah. Um, but the thing about bikes, and I did talk about this when I came back, that blew me away is you will not see anyone. Wearing a helmet, mm. even mothers. I mean, all families are on bikes all the time. So you'll see a, a mother, and she'll have two little kids um, on the back. No helmets. Well, don't and, you think that probably means that's probably not super smart? But don't you think also it's the fact they're not zooming ahead; they're all riding very maybe slowly, but, and also there aren't so many cars. To come, because don't you think the helmet largely has to do with accidents because of trying to avoid? Cars but I remember and looking at it and thinking, "Oh wow, if I lived in Amsterdam, I could ride a bike," because I won't ride a bike because I look like a dork in a helmet. So you'd rather be brain dead, like yes. hospital in a coma, looking lovely. Um, and and also, come, they we don't. I'll come visit you in the hospital, and say, "Bitch, you can't talk back now." <laughs> oh, God. You are, so, oh my 
God, you mean man. Uh, well, so the, anyway, the, <laughs> the other thing, though, about the bikes in Amsterdam yes. uh, that I loved are these are the kind of bikes I would like to ride because the bikes here are those torture devices oh, right, right, with right. a seat, you know, a seat. Right, yeah, they yeah, call yeah, this yeah. a seat. What it is is something that practically gives you a proctology exam. She prefers and, the two humped it? camel. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and then well, also, they put the handlebars. Bikes, they? No, they put the no, handlebars I mean, like down here. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're you're ba- you're you're. It's like a yoga t- pose. Yeah, you're in this yeah. terrible position, and it is. It's, it's awful. Tough. No, and, but also most of them I remember they they're mostly girls' bikes too, so they're easy right, to right, jump right, off. Right, 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 right. Girls' bikes. So, yeah, so they, these are the bikes you remember from your childhood. Yeah, right. You sit up. The last. You sit up and you pedal, and there's not all these, and because it's, it's flat. Well, you I remember almost 20 years, years ago, so I was 40 something. I had not ridden a bike for probably 30 years. And I was in Amsterdam with a bunch of friends, and we went to the Van Gogh Museum <laughs> to go back to you. And it's in this marvelous park. So everyone said, oh, let's take a bike ride in through this park. And I was like, all right. And it was quite chilly, quite cold, so I had a long coat on. And then I thought, if not, you know, you think, oh, you never forget. <laughs> well. Well, you were wobbly, but you wobbly. do. No, yeah, I mean, we wobbly. could do, then but you got uh, everyone and I was sort of wobbly in my coat. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to get caught in the spokes of the gears, yeah. and I'd be yeah. thrown into the Zoider Z. <laughs> but, and then on brick, it's not particularly easy to ride a bike. And so many of those streets are, you know, b- I was screamed at by a biker. Get out! Of, you know, just screamed at me in Dutch. Wow, the hoof! I guess I had wandered. I oh, mean, yeah. pedestrian. Bikers have the right of way over right. pedestrians. You can't. A pedestrian is at great risk right, in Amsterdam. Right, right, right. Well, it's like what? any country, though. I mean, just, I always know every single time I go to Britain or Australia where they drive on the other side of the street, the first day you really have, because you're so used to looking yeah, in no, one direction. Yeah. Your life is in danger. Yeah, and you, yeah. See, you always have to think, all right, look to the left, look right, to the left, and then right. you get into it. But uh-huh. so being in any culture, Japan, they, they drive on the other side as well. Okay. So there was, um, geez, we're running out of time here, Thomas. Oh, dear. It's, Thomas we William. having fun. Well, we are. And I just want to thank, I, know. I think when? it was Don yes. who uh, tweeted, uh, keep it light. And I, <laughs> I just want to say, I listened. Other than Ray's burning shoes. and what Oh, else? no, but that's light. I love it. Oh, that's light. I mean, yes, that's the, true. The, the wasps out there might not have, but <laughs> tough. Okay, so. Um, He's our I, favorite mix. I right? really <laughs> didn't read this whole thing, but I bet you saw this. Um, what? It's a thing about when you go to an art museum, you finally get to the Louvre. Yes. Or you get to the uh, British Museum right. or MoMA or yes. the... Yes. And the, all of a sudden, there you are. And you, you walk into a room and... Oh, good yeah. Lord! <laughs> oh, my God! It's all of these paintings that you know mm-hmm. you know. Yes. And there's, and you're in the room with them. And they say that if you were to watch people at the Louvre now, you know what they do? They walk up to the Mona Lisa if they can get anywhere near her. And, you know, she's just little. She's just like this little thing. Well, it's bigger than that. but Not but, much. But it's, but it's not huge. It's yes. surprising. I mean, I was surprised when I saw it. Because well, it's, it's so big in our in the, heads. Yes, yes, that's true. And it just seemed like just little. Yeah. So... They just take out their cameras or oh, their yeah, thing, yeah. and they take a picture. Right. Which well, is so the well, oddest well, 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 no, thing. Well, no, no, you know, no, 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 not in this culture because most people, and it's not just works of art, it's anything, it's about memories. And they're more concerned about their memories when they get back home to Natrona Heights than it is in front of whether it's a painting or a sports event. Okay, well, wait a minute. Best. So, uh, before. First of all, stop picking on Natrona Heights. <laughs> yes. And secondly, and secondly, hygienists. <laughs> this is this is really people are nuts because they're so intense well, on, that's on what a, I was get having to. a memory yeah. that they.
they don't, they don't have the experience. Well, exactly. No, no. Well, well, I say it's like being a football well, game, not watching someone throw that pass, you know, how many yards, but just weeks. I want to show it to all the guys having a beer in the rec room. You know, somebody else has already taken a picture that's better than whatever picture you're oh, going to yeah. take. Well, I always so. used to tell students that very oftentimes I didn't have a camera early on. I mean, I did later because when I was teaching, I wanted to have slides of this. But I would say if I took a picture, I wasn't then in the moment and I couldn't. But those exactly places right. where I would look at a painting, I can remember some of the colors even today. Because the work of art does its mis, you know, it's like going to hear a singer. It's and same thing. They say nowadays people, it's very hard for people to buy records because records. Maybe this is true of classical music, but not necessarily. They want to hear the perfect uh, song, you know, uh, satisfaction by you know. They don't want to hear if that night uh, Mick Jagger's horse. Or if it's Pavarotti, he can't sing the high note. They want the perfect version. And when you record in the studio, you can do it because you clip it. Right, 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 right. But the point but is, live. But live, sometimes those performances, even if so-and-so's horse or something, something else makes up for exactly it. Exactly right. But people want the perfect experience. And there is no such thing. Okay. They go on to say, though... The average visitor to a museum spends 15 to 30 seconds oh, in yeah. front of any one painting and then moves on to the but, next. You know, what they do, it's even worse, and I know this from many, many years. They go, at the, they read the label first. Right. Leonardo da Vinci, Florentine, blah, 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 Mona Lisa, you know. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, on, on panel, et cetera, canvas. Um, and then they go look at it. Oh, yeah. Next one. And then they go. Because they know how to read, but they don't know how to look. Well, so um, here's a great quote from uh, somebody. Actually, it's a psychologist who says, when you go to the library, you don't walk along the shelves looking at the spines of the books mm, and on mm. your way out tweet to your friends, I read 100 books today. <laughs> That it would be far better to go to a museum, and even if you might never get there again in your life, but just spend time yes, right, exactly. with 10 paintings. Well, or, because think but, about it in terms of the book metaphor. How many times have you gone, well, library too, but let's say to a bookshop, you sort of say it says, you know, blood on her chin, and you think, oh, I like murder mysteries. And then you open the inside, and you may read a page or two. Right. And you say, oh, I like the way he writes or she writes. So you have some soupçon, some little taste of what it is. I think I like the way this person writes. And the same thing is you look at a painting, you look at the blue, look at the so-and-so, and yes, there may be some symbolism, you know, she's holding a hook yeah, yeah, or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have to have that be described to you. But I know we have the Warhol Museum, and even though War Warhol's works are somewhat hapless in that sense, there's not so much no, texture, no, whatever. No, not. But people would come in, Mona Lisa, uh, John F. Kennedy, car crash, and they'd walk out. You say, well, how did he render the car crash? Well, they how checked that off their list. Oh, yeah. I did it. Yeah, I went yeah, to the yeah, Warhol. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I went to the Warhol. And if anybody ever comes up in conversation, did you ever see? Right. Oh, I was uh, at the Warhol. I saw you. Yeah, right, 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 right. um, no, better just to whatever. Feel. Feel. Sense. Allow yourself yes. some Open quiet. Your sense to experience, to right. live in a society where things, sounds, smells. Because I'm always exhausted you. by museums. Oh, if you really look. Oh, I completely uh, Just agree. exhausted. I mean, you have to. If, an hour in, I'm done. I, yeah, I am just so really totally looking. exhausted. Well, we are so done. I'm exhausted yes. too. That's not such a valid. We're so done. <laughs> That's not a valid girlism. We're so done. But this was fun. Yes, it and was. And I thank you very much for joining us. Have a lovely fall. Don't let too many leaves fall in your soup. Oh my God, this huge branch fell off a tree into, your soup? into my backyard oh. when I was sitting there. I, I, oh, I, that wind the other oh, day? Oh, it was. No, but it's a branch of the, much longer than this. I. It, God, what a Maybe sound God it made. Maybe God didn't write his, oh, your name wow. strongly enough. I thought, wow, if life. I was sitting there, I'd be dead. Yes. I'd be dead. God Have watching. a wonderful day. Okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>